They know who did it, they know the situation, and it's just unacceptable that he was able to get up and leave. A man on the TBI's most wanted list slips through the cracks after he was taken to the hospital and somehow got away. Edgar Torres Rangel allegedly hit and killed a 29-year-old woman in a drunk driving crash. News 4's Rebecca Cardenas live at Vanderbilt University Medical Center tonight. So, Rebecca, how did this happen? Well, that's the big question, Tom and Tracy. Torres Rangel was airlifted here from Shelbyville the day of the accident. Even after THP issued a warrant for his arrest, somehow he got out of the hospital. Now, THP and VUMC both say the protocol was uh, followed on both of their parts, but the community that this young woman is from say they want someone held accountable. When somebody called and said, did you hear who it was? And it was pretty devastating. Brooke Sanders' friend calling to say her close friend, Carrie King, was killed in this crash, hit head on by a suspected drunk driver. She was probably the best person I'll ever know. THP says Edgar Torres Rangel was behind the wheel. He was taken to the hospital immediately after the crash. Now he's on the TBI's most wanted list. They know who did it, they know the situation, and it's just unacceptable that he was able to get up and leave. The crash happened on Highway 231 North on October 21st. Torres Rangel was too hurt to be arrested, so Life Flight took him from Bedford County to Vanderbilt Hospital. He was released at some point after October 22nd. He was placed on the TBI's most wanted list November 20th. That was the most infuriating thing, and I think it still is. It just fell through the cracks. News 4 reached out to THP and Vanderbilt. Both say no rules were violated. In a statement, THP says in part, THP operated within the scope of the law and would have taken Torres Rangel into custody had we been notified of his release. VUMC saying in part, we do our best to work collaboratively with local and state agencies on these matters, but the ultimate responsibility for legal custody resides with the arresting agency. We expect somebody to say, hey, we made a mistake. Her death doesn't need to go in vain. This is an issue that doesn't need to come up again. No one else should have to go through this. Now, Brooke says that she and several members of her community have been in contact with their local representatives, urging them to write legislation to prevent this from ever happening again. Tom, Tracy. Oh, Rebecca, thank you very much.